So at what point did, did Alpo get arrested? After he, after he was in Harlem, he went out to D.C. Doing what he do, whatever, 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 out in D.C. And um, I think, you know, according to what they say on these documentaries and reading, uh, a lot of people lost their lives. He's laying down a lot of people. You know, and I don't see, to me personally speaking, I don't understand the reason for murder, murder, murder. If it was about money, 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 everybody getting money. Yeah. Not unless it's something of the hidden agenda that, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know. But it's deep to me, man. Okay. And I still believe that when you learn about situations, how the government set up people, like the movie, um, what's the name of that film? Deep Cover? Yeah. You don't know if these people were police all along, man. Undercover. And they can't blow their cover. But they got a badge to play the game, man. That's how wicked this shit is. You play it from a street point of view, breaking the law, and you got a dodge the cops, but you might be working for working with one of them dudes. They could take your head off at any given time. Legally. Legally, with a badge. Go any more fucking where they want to go and do this. So that's the question that, that lurks inside of me. It's like, damn, who is this dude? You mean Alpo? Whoever. Okay. Poe and many others. Alpo's out in D.C. selling drugs. Mm -hmm. It's even like in the gangs today, man. You know, like all these young kids getting murdered. And it ain't really no money in the streets, but people are getting murdered in cold blood every fucking day right. from gang violence for what? So at, at what point does, does, Alpo, oh. does Alpo actually get, get arrested? Uh, D.C., he get locked up, I think, in 93. Okay, for what? For bodies, for murders, uh, the, the dude, I think, Wayne Perry or something like that. He posted a total on Wayne Perry. It's a, you know, I don't, I, after, after Rich, man, I pull out, but you hear the stories. Mm -hmm. You hear all the crazy shit, and it just makes you wonder why. And I just can't see it being about money, man. I think it was a deeper agenda, bro. According to what I hear, he told on a lot of people because they was going to give him the chair. So he said, fuck that. You know, I'm gonna this tell is you. what I hear. Do, does Alpo officially get connected to Rich Porter's murder? He admits to it. He admits to it? Yes, sir. So he said, I killed Rich Porter. He admits to that. That's where the scratches came from. I don't know if he's saying that's where the scratches came okay, but, from. But it doesn't matter. But he admits point. to killing Rich. But he did that. He didn't do that to the little boy. Yeah, you understand. So, eventually, I think maybe like in '95, they caught that crew that did that. The uncle and one of the the uncle, but he was working for someone, and I think he told on everybody in his organization, and he said that he didn't have nothing to do with that situation. Mm -hmm. That was called by the uncle. You feel me? What he mind up? They had was murdering a lot of people in Harlem just as well, storing cats and doing that. Okay. So that's what happened with that situation. Okay, so Alpo gets locked up in '93. He admits to killing Rich Porter. Yes, sir. That just sent shockwaves through <coughs> through Harlem, or did people already? I'm gonna cut put it, it like this. You see Scarface? Yeah. That sent the shockwave through Harlem and through people like. When Scarface killed this man. Yeah. You feel me? Like, damn, why you do that? You feel me? Because they was like that. It was like if Rich bust out with the M3, Poe would bust out with it. was a thing, like, you know, from it's like we was on a stage and the people looking at this performance, how do you kill your man? That's how it was. Like, oh, baby. That's how that was. And people maybe still don't accept that. Like, it's incredible. Okay, so Alpo admits to murder, and he admits to multiple murders? 
I believe so. Okay. But because he, he tells on other people, they, they lower his sentence. I'm not sure. Because okay. you hear one thing, you hear another thing, you hear this, you hear that. I don't know. I don't have the details right. to that, man. But it's something shady about all that to me, so I just don't. But Alpo gets out. I don't know. This is what I hear. I heard he's home now. A lot of people say Alpo's home, Alpo's home. But they've been saying this hmm. five, six years ago. Okay, because I had heard that he's in witness protection. That, that, that was the word I heard, but then again, I'm not very connected to this whole thing. I don't know. I haven't seen him. Okay, and you never try to reach out to him in prison no, or no, nothing? No, no, no. 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 We spoke. You spoke? We spoke a few times when he was locked up. Really? We spoke like twice. And what was that conversation about? The first conversation was, I'm trying to write a movie about this shit. Okay. And, um... He told, this girl I knew, knew where he was at, and we met, we supposed to meet at his, I met at her house, he was going to call at a certain time, and he called, and uh, I told him, and I asked him, like, yo, why, man? And he was like, yo, man, nigga, Rich lied, man, about connect, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, cool. But um, he was like, Rich gave him, gave him the birds at a certain price, and he should have gave it to him at a different price. This is the reason why he did that. He rich fucked him out about two or three hundred thousand. You know, whatever, whatever he said. But I'm like, okay, cool. But I'm trying to do a movie. That was my whole issue of speaking to him because I didn't want to just write a movie and and not, you know, have him co-sign. He's like, all right, no problem, man. Whatever, whatever. I think he had signed the paper where he needed to sign and. The movie was, we wrote, I wrote the movie, which was entitled Trap, and trying to steer the generation that was, I saw following us into a different direction, but it came out as paid in full. That's another story within itself. Okay. But um, at the end of the day, I spoke to him then, then I spoke to him again. Case Slade wanted us to do something called Face Off on one of his mixtapes, yeah. and we spoke then. And uh, Troy Reeds had set up a situation one time when we spoke then because we were doing the documentary, The Game Over. Yeah. And that's the times we spoke. And there was no, no hard feelings in the conversation. You understand? It was like, all right, hey, okay, man. We're going to do this, we're going to do that, and that's that. You feel me? And there was no hard feelings, bro. And you never ended up going to prison? Nah, okay. Not for that. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't really. Nah, I didn't really never go to prison. I got locked up before a few times, but not not for for, for drug dealing and, and all that like that. So you essentially were <clears throat> one of the ones that actually got out without being dead or locked up forever. Yes, sir. But but you did hit me out, my brother. But you did get shot up pretty badly. He got shot up pretty badly. Lost family members. Lost family members. Lost friends. Lost friends. Constantly being looked at as, you know, a drug dealer. That's it, that's all. That hurts. You feel me? Mm -hmm. When you move into a community and when you first get there, you're like, ah, cool. Somewhere at peace. But then when someone in the community find out who you are, now the whole community sign a petition to get you out of there in fear of their lives. Mm. People don't see that part of the game. You understand? So yeah. it's weird, bro. It's weird. You looking at a lot of cats, yo, I'm, a, I'm ace, I'm out, you know. But you're not really seeing, like, damn, bro. You gotta stay low. You you know your life is in jeopardy every fucking day. Yeah. Cause you don't know who's who. Right. Old beefs and you know, so forth. Not even not even old beefs, man. It's like you don't know, man. You don't know, cause truth alone can get you murdered, bro. People don't want you to tell the truth, man. 
and you're trying to do it to help save a generation, they don't want that. So, so you wrote the story that eventually became, well, first it was... Trap. I wrote it you wrote trap. trap. Yes, sir. Which eventually became the game over. Came paid in full in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but game over was like the DVD. Game over was the DVD that me and Troy Reeve put together. Yeah, which was big in New York. Yes, sir. And then that became the major movie, Paid in Full. Yes, sir. Which I think what Dame Dash was involved in, Steve Rifkin, I think, was involved in. Yes, Rockefeller, Rockefeller. Miramax. Yeah. Yes, sir. When you, when you look at the, you know, the, the final product of Paid in Full, are you happy with it? Good movie. Don't get me wrong. It's a classic. Good movie, man. Excellent cast. Everybody played their role to perfection. Cameron did a good role playing out, but Wood Harris did a good played a good role playing me. Yeah. Lulu, good role, good movie, man. But at the end of the film, why do you make it look like I was wearing a wire and told on Alpha? Which that that never happened. Never happened, bro. So here I present a film to them, Trap, to try to save a generation. Like, wake up, man. Why do y'all destroy my character to the streets that who I'm trying to talk to to make it look like I was a snitch so that they can't hear the message? Because who want to listen to a snitch? Yeah. So that's when I, you know, question who are these guys? Maybe they're all one trying to solidify what they're doing is right and we're wrong. Huh? Now, if this is true, how the government was using the game to finance a war, we was making so that y'all could finance the war. So right. are we guilty if we were set up to do this? Because in, in those days, man, we had cheese lines wrapped around the block. People on, you know, buying drugs, police ride right by like it was nothing. Right. From about 84 to 90. And that's when, after 90, they came in. Right. Well, we, we interviewed uh, Freeway, Freeway Rick Ross. And, uh, you know, it was established in terms of how he was used in the whole Iran-Contra thing. Well, my role was that Blendon would bring me drugs to sell to raise money for the Contras. Uh, the Contras was backed by the CIA, which was Ronald Reagan and George Bush. And George Bush is pet peeve. George Bush Sr. is pet peeve. Uh, they felt that if they lost Nicaragua, that um, Russia would be marching down the streets of the United States. Okay. But where's the Iran part? Well, they sold guns to Iran and took the money and gave it to the Contras. But then they were also selling drugs, or well, they were allowing drugs to pass through <clears throat> into America and using that money and putting it to the Contras as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But the initial money come from Iran because the uh, Congress had said that they couldn't give the Contras any money. So they had to get it from a source that nobody would know about. It, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's so much there, you know, it, it, you, get, you really got to do your homework. And then, you know, they also had the hostages in Iran that Ronald Reagan was able to get them loose because he was going to give them weapons for the hostages along with getting some money. How much of this did you actually know about? None. So, I learned so, all this while I was in jail. Okay. So when you were actually selling drugs and so forth, did, did it seem... I didn't care about Iran. <laughs> yeah. You didn't care about none of that stuff. The man. Contras in Nicaragua, nothing. You were just you were just selling drugs to make man, money. Let's make some money. All this is happening, and the CIA is actually overlooking this whole process, right? From what I understand. From what you understand. Yeah, I didn't see the CIA doing it, but you know they came back and said, "Yeah, we were, we were watching them." And you know there there was there was the whole thing of like, you know will run the drugs into these black communities where they kill each other, but no one calls the police. Things, you know, the murders essentially go unsolved. Nobody cares. Exactly. And, and here's a great way for us to basically make our money exactly. without, without raising too much media attention. But in the midst of that, right, 
This is what I look at. In the midst of that, you're going to have to have your players planted in there yeah. so that you can know who's who. Yeah. You understand? So these are the cats that, like, wow. You feel me? So, But I'm new to this at that time. But I learned, like, oh, shit. Like, okay, now I see who's who and what's what, man. Yeah. But that's a danger to know. You understand? Sure. That's... Cause they they want they want you can't expose these people, man. Right? Look, I work with them on Mad. Mm -hmm. Good guys. Mm -hmm. Good heart. Good guys. Give you the shirt off their back. Is it, is it ironic? Is, is, is it a coincidence that they both, most of their friends are white and got white wives? They like white women? I, I mean. And they develop envy because they go home. They get out the car with, they, with, with, with their friend, with their other partner, and he listening to your music. They walk in the house. They girl listening to your music. They go downstairs, the kids doing a dance to your music. Now they are hypnotized with hatred. 